Hey everybody, how's it going? It's time for part nine of how to port a power saw. Chainsaw, two stroke. This applies to all two strokes. In this part of the series, part nine, we are going to chamfer the ports. Some would argue, and, uh, and I would agree, chamfering is the most important part of a port job. If you do not chamfer your ports, you will tear that piston up real bad. Ask me how I know. <laughs> And again, I'm just trying to share what I know. This isn't the only way to do this, but uh, I'm trying to save you guys some trouble through my own trials and tribulations on my journey to porting. I'm going to set you guys up on the bench and let's have a closer look at what we're doing here. Okay, I got you guys set up on the bench here. What we are doing right now, this is the cutaway. I actually have a few more cutaway videos planned. Okay. We are chamfering this edge right here, okay? You see this? This edge right here, when we raise the exhaust, we ground it flat. That gives a sharp ridge, okay? That's going to give a sharp ridge to this edge here. We want to chamfer that so that when the piston goes up, there's nothing sharp that'll cut the piston up, okay? Same thing with the intake right here. Okay, we have lowered the intake floor. Okay, so we want to put a chamfer on this intake. Now I'm going to go right around the ports. And same thing. The transfer ports, we want to chamfer around those two. If you don't do that, what ends up happening, you will score the piston up really, really bad. Let's have a look at our Echo CS670. Okay, we got our porting done. Now you can see there's a factory chamfer right here. Okay, there's no chamfer on the bottom. That's because I have ported this. And when I run my finger on there, and believe me, your finger is your best test. It's sharp. Okay, I can really feel a sharp edge. If I left that like that, it would cut the piston up. Same thing with the exhaust. The factory chamfer is still on the bottom, but look, it's flat on the top. Okay. And when I rub my finger over there, it's sharp. Okay, and same thing. I want to go around the sides. I want to go around the sides. And like, look, there, I wanted to show you guys that. When I was grinding this, I actually skipped across the plating a little bit. If you do that, don't worry about it. It's, uh, it happens. It happens, and uh, it didn't go through. No big deal. But there, look, even I do that sometimes. There's a few really, you, can, you can't even really feel them with your nail, but they are there. Okay, we'll fix that when we scuff this cylinder. So there you guys go. We're going to put a chamfer on the bottom here and on the top here. I'll get set up and let's make this happen. Okay, I just want to show you guys. These are, let's see if we can get this to focus here. You see these? These are what I use for chamfering. Okay. These are diamond impregnated little tiny wee. They're like a small ball hone, whatever you want to call it. Okay. I use these. They even go down to a really small size. Okay. This one works good, but the problem is it's hard to get in there with it and, and stay on track. These also work. These are rubber that's impregnated with, uh, with a uh, uh, like a silica product okay use whatever works for you or you can take your finger with some sandpaper and do it by hand um, I would definitely recommend that if it's your first go at it because you won't wreck anything that way but whatever works for you again we all port different um, Whatever works for you, I'm happy with. I'm just showing you guys what I do to kind of get you guys going on porting. Okay, let's get this set up and let's chop for our ports. Okay, let's do the intake first. Okay, I'm going to take this. I'm going to brace my. I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to brace it on the ground. Okay, I'm just going to hit that edge. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going around the sides. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see, but I'm getting rid of that sharp edge. Okay, I'm creating like a little rem. Super light pressure. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to go to the exhaust side. Okay. Now, I'm going to set you guys back up and see if we can get this on film. Okay, now I'm going to do this one from the outside in. And in this case, I can't do it because of the camera, so I'm going to do it just like this. Okay? Now, all I'm doing is I'm breaking that edge. And you'll be able to feel it. Okay? Straight down inside. Once it starts cutting, it'll just follow the little flat spot. Now again, you got to be careful. I've touched the cylinder a couple times with my tool. Uh, no big deal, but just try, try and pay attention to where your tool is at all times. You guys can see that flat that I've created. That's what we're doing here. If you're not sure what you're doing, take a picture of the factory chamfer and try and recreate what you see. Okay, and I'm just checking it with my finger. It's a little bit better. I'm going to hit it one more time. Now remember, we haven't touched the bottom, so we shouldn't need to chamfer that. You can if you want to. If we can get this thing to focus here. See that little ledge that we've created? There you go. See the ledge? That's what a chapfer is. See if we can get the light to catch it. There you go. That right there is the chamfer. See that ledge? Okay, I'm going to hit that a couple more times. And just, I want to deepen it just a little bit. Now you don't want your chapters to be too big. Just enough is what I say. But again, I just know what I know. And if you make your chapters bigger and they work, I'm, I'm cool with that. Remember, if you don't do this, you will scar that piston up real bad. Be mindful of that stuff when you're checking your timing. Make sure. Um, at least hit this with sandpaper if you're going to check your timing. You don't have to tap for it right away, but... All we're doing is breaking that edge. Okay, we got our transfer ports here. Again, I'm just going to break the edge 
this isn't as crucial in this spot, but I just, again, I know this will be here and I want it to, I want it to look good. I want it to function and, and, and perform and just last. This is a work saw, so we want it to work, right? Somebody's going to end up with this and it'll be their work saw. And if it lasts for years, I've done my job. My mantra is, when I build a saw, as long as the person looks after it, it should perform. Uh, it should last for, for many, many years. Okay, go to the other side. All I'm doing is getting rid of any chipped plating, right? Because when you grind away the plating, you, you fracture it on a microscopic level. Okay, so I'm just riding that outside plating. I'm just cleaning this up. There's a little splash in here. This doesn't need to be done. Again, I just, I'm like, oh, don't judge me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hit the intake one more time. The intake's a little bit harder. Now what you could do is you can shine a light through the exhaust port and look at your intake through it. Okay, I'm going to do that right now. Okay, I can actually see it. You won't be able to see it on camera, unfortunately. Gonna hit it one more time. Okay, check it with your finger. It already feels a hundred times better. It's still not smooth though. So we're gonna have to hit this with some sandpaper when we're done. Which we would anyways. Once you start grinding with this or, or smoothing it with this, once you get once you get that chamfer started, it should just ride the, tra the chamfer. Okay, maneuvers like this are where you got to be careful because you can run across the plating. Uh, hand strength and being aware of where you're at is the name of the game when you're doing this kind of stuff. Because I am cutting this with the end of my tool, so it wants to jump. This is where practice... This is where practice uh, is the name of the game. I, I do this all the time, so I, I know what my tooling is going to do before it does it, so. Okay, I think that's a fairly good chamfer. I don't want to bore you guys with 20 minutes of chamfering. But again, I, I want it, some people learn quicker than others. I want those of you who are studying this to see what I do. Because porting is all about this stuff, guys. You, you might be focused on the numbers. The numbers don't matter if you don't do this stuff properly. Um, you won't get any good data if the saw blows up. Okay. Wipe this with my finger, put the autofocus back on. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see that, but I've literally put, there's a slight edge on there. There you go, now you can see it. Okay, it kind of matches the top one and the exhaust port. Can you see the edge? Here, I'm going to grab my pointer. You can just see it. You can barely see the edge there. Okay? Again, run your finger over it. It's smooth now. It's not sharp. Okay? I'm going to reset us up and uh, let's do some more work to this. This is 400 grit wet dry. I want you guys to go in there with your finger 
Okay. I want you. I zoomed us back here so you guys can see. I want you to go in there and I want you to shine those ports off as good as you can. Okay. Remember, check with your finger. You'll feel if it's a little bit grabby. If it's a little bit grabby, that port is still a little too sharp. Okay. Go in there. Get your finger into that port and just go back and forth. Now, if you have a hone, a ball hone, a lot of times the ball hone will do this for you. But remember, I'm doing this for the entry level, never ported a saw before crowd. And uh, I want you guys to feel like you can do this even if you don't have all the tools. And ball hones aren't cheap and they're sized per cylinder. So uh, I don't expect you guys to spend $300 on a ball hone set that you might never use again. So this works just fine. It takes longer. But again, we're not doing production work here. We're just porting a saw for ourselves. Like already, already I would say this is 99%. It's, uh, it's shiny. I can feel it with my finger on the top. It's smooth. It feels like glass. That's what you want. You want it to feel like it, like it was, you know, molded like that. Not that you cut it and you'll, you'll see, feel it, feel it before you, you chamfer it and uh after and you guys will see that you know this stuff it's all by feel and and you'll know uh again this feels really smooth now we grab the intake side this one's a lot easier to do because you can just you can just hit it with 400 grit and again don't be too worried about sanding in a cylinder uh i remember when i started doing chainsaws I was like super worried to scratch the Nicosil and don't worry about it guys uh, if you sand through Nicosil in a cylinder like this it probably wasn't any good anyways unless you really really spent you know an, an evening reefing on it um, this stuff's pretty this stuff's pretty uh, tough okay so that's what I'm doing now you could go around with one of these these are really really fine uh, also, this is what you could use to polish your exhaust port. Okay, if you wanted to make it shinier than this, again, uh, I use Opti 2 oil. It doesn't make carbon really at all, period. So, um, I don't shine a lot of stuff. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll hit you guys back up when I'm done all this. Okay, I just wanted you guys to see I clean it up. Now, it's funny, these little lines and stuff, I can't. I see that through the camera better than I see it with my eye. You can't feel any of that stuff at all. I'm just going to zoom you in here. Okay. It's funny because you, you don't feel any of that stuff. If you can see a mark, but you can't feel it, don't even worry about it. And in fact, a lot of, a lot of slight scoring can be honed out and or it doesn't matter. So there you guys go. Okay, we're back at the bench. That was part nine of how to port a chainsaw. Um, honestly, this is probably the most important part. You have to do this. This is the one thing I'm gonna say, you have to chamfer for your ports. However you go about it, you can go in there with a nail file, you can go in there with sandpaper, but just make sure you do it because like I said, if you don't, when that saw gets hot, you will score that piston up bad. Uh, you'll think you have an air leak or something, you won't. And also, that little chamfer, as the ring goes in the exhaust port, that helps ease the ring in a little bit and the shape of the port, right? So, pretty important stuff here. Um, take your time doing your first chamfers. Try not to make them too deep. And uh, it's just a, you're just breaking the edge, just a thin little break. And then again, go over it. With 400, 600, 1,000 grit, whatever you have that's fine, go over it and polish it up. Okay, part nine. Uh, this will go in the playlist along with the rest of them. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming here and, and listening to what I do. Um, I don't take that lightly. I'm just a fellow porting saws in his shop. So um, I really appreciate that you guys are coming here and, and checking out what I'm doing. Okay, part nine. 
Next will be part 10. Later, guys. Thanks for coming.